Hey, snackers, join us for our next episode of DevNet Snack Minute, where our own developer advocate, Karima Skander, talks about site automation with Cisco DNA Center. Hey, Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 21 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that we do here at DevNet. And the cool thing we're going to be talking about today is site automation with Cisco DNA Center. Uh, Kareem's going to walk us through uh, some implementation of code and uh, do a demo for us. So, Kareem, uh, why don't you start by kind of explaining what you mean by site automation with Cisco DNA Center? All right, Matt. So, this is something that um, that I get a lot of questions from our internal community as well as our ex external community, and we uh, the question that we essentially get is, well. I'm moving from you know a controller and my network controller, whether it's uh, APIC, EM, or I'm moving from Prime, and I have a whole bunch of DNA Center, uh, you know, sitting there for, for them to, to get started with or to to start building out my network, and I want to be able to move my sites from one end to the other, right? Or in general, I have DNA Center coming in, and I want to be able to programmatically create my sites. I want to go out and discover the the devices that you know do an auto discovery of the devices that are sitting on my network I want to bring them into dna center and i want to start managing them then, uh, that way right so there are a lot of steps to this so what i wanted to do is i wanted to show how easy it is actually to build that out in using leveraging the the uh, cisco dna center sdk uh and you know just programmability in general and and, and have it as part of uh, the block series that we uh, that we release. So I, I just did that, uh, just that, and uh, we kind of I want to walk you through the steps that that how to get to to kind of like the end result, right? And um, there are a couple of things that you need to you need to know, and it's all on developer.cisco.com. These are the steps. So you're creating a site. In order to create a site, you have to first of all you have to authenticate against the API, right? Um, that's just given. That's the base of everything. It's always the hardest step, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And different authentication methods, and we talk about a lot about that in um, in, in our episodes, essentially. Um, so the first of all, you authenticate, and DNA Center has the the way you build your site is you have an area within an area you can put in a building, and then within your building uh, you can go out and essentially define your floors, define whatever whatever it is that that your site looks like, right? So you create your building and from there you have your site. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and say, all right, now that I have my site created and I'll show you how we programmatically use the different endpoints to create the site, let's go out based on an IP range, based on you know CDP neighbor, whatever it is that that the 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 way of discovering your your devices, if you have, you know, if your devices have been connected to your network already, chances are you already have the IP address range of what your subnet is and all of that, right? So you can go tell DNA Center that go from range A to Z or from one to 100, uh, go out and do an auto discovery. Like go look at all of the devices, doesn't matter what they are. It could be router switches, wireless name controllers, access points, it, it doesn't really matter, right? I just want you to go out Use SSH, use Telnet, uh, use RESTConf, use NetConf, and I want you to go and discover my devices. And DNA Center is going to go do that auto discovery for us and come back with a list of devices. Now, because we have access to enrichment uh, API, I could go in and get further information about these devices, and I can logically say, okay, all of my switches that are labeled switches San Jose building 20, they need to go and sit in. 20, building 20, second floor, right? And I can make that logical decision based on the data that's coming back from the device information itself. And we're doing just that. Yeah, just so I understand. So we're talking about, um, you know, day zero, day one activities, but 
I've already plugged in my switches. I've already plugged in my routers. I've already cabled them. And now I'm setting up a scenario that I've, I've, you know, manually created the area or the building. Or I shouldn't say manually. Maybe we automate this process through those APIs and, and code. And then, um, and then now that we do the auto discovery, we'll take the result of that and put that into the sites that we've created. I, is that right? That's a hundred percent. I have one more question. <laughs> Does the topology get generated as well um, for those devices? That is part of uh, Cisco DNA Center itself. So once you oh, generate okay. your site and you bring in your devices, the topology is automatically generated for you as part of that. Oh. Uh, okay, cool. Some of the some of the site there are some options in the site APIs as well. The slash site endpoint where you can actually go and upload the floor plan, um, and you can tell it where you know, where is this, the site is and, you know, address of the, the, the building. And so you can drill in further on and apply as many information as, as you can within that API endpoint. Um, okay. So we're doing all of this. And what's cool about this, if you look at this step, right? So creating the site, creating, you know, going out, creating the credentials for uh, the RESTConf, NETCONF, SSH, these are credentials that will, you'll, you need to supply as part of the, the, the auto discovery to allow DNA Center to get into those devices and get information about them, right? Um, and the you have to, once you, you know, and we've talked about this, we talked about this before on a previous episode of DevNet Snack Minute, everything in DNA Center is asynchronous, right? So, which means you go say, I'm going to start a task. You have to wait for that task to complete and come back and execute the next one. So um, we're actually leveraging uh, the, DNA Center SDK that the Python SDK to do this. So some of that is actually pretty straightforward and automated. And I'll show you in a second here in code. Um, I go in and I create a new discovery. And then once the discovery is completed, I come back and say, all right, I'm ready. Uh, here are the devices. Let's go ahead and add them to the site that we created. Uh, so let's just do that. Before I get into the code, I'm, I'm going to leverage my uh, DevNet sandbox to log into this. This is really cool. Uh, I get excited about this, but the thing that you mentioned about the managing the task ID in the Python SDK, I'm actually really pumped to see that because um, one of the harder parts of working with the API is having to, uh, with the asynchronous nature of the API, is having to check that task ID over and over again until we get a, you know, a successful run or a failure. Um, so I'm, I'm pumped to see that the Python SDK manages that. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, it's it makes your life much so much easier than handling everything um, on your own and on your end. So uh, with that, let me actually walk you through the code and what we're doing here, Matt. Uh, maybe it will be best since this takes a couple of minutes as we're running through the code. I could actually try to initiate the the discovery process and creation. And I can walk sure. you through what's happening here. Um, so you're gonna like this, Matt, because uh, remember the last episode you introduced me to to the rich API. And oh, yeah. I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to bring that into my my projects that I build because it's actually really, really cool and it makes and especially in stuff like this where you know we're waiting for a process to be done and there's like an entire loop waiting or you know there you, you have a process that says, you know, I want to display all of the my devices in a nice way. The rich API the rich library itself is just pretty bad that I you know I, I brought it into here and you'll see some of the cool stuff that we uh, that you can do with it. Uh, but if I do Python 3, uh, this is automation. So let this run, right? So right now it's building the new site. Uh, it's exactly doing that flow, right? So we'll we'll let it we'll let it run. The site is area 51, and it's in the building is deep space, and it's added. And notice how like the colors and the emojis are kicking in. And then I've created first floor, and this is again this is my you know little uh, rich. Uh, kind of waiting for the, uh, the the discovery to initiate and to be active. So we're sitting here waiting. We're initiated discovery. Let's go look at how we've done this while the discovery is happening. So okay, cool. If I go back to the DNA Center real quick, Maddie, uh, and if I look at my discovery, here's my discovery that's happening. I've kicked that off, right? So it's doing its magic and it's trying to find the devices. Uh, in this case, let's just have a peek at what's happening. So I'm leveraging the 
DNA Center SDK to do all of this. I am also leveraging Rich, which is an entire episode that you cover. So if you're interested, go check out that episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Um, and I'm going out and saying, okay, first of all, I want to create my sites. So my sites are nothing more than just JSON, and I'm defining my area as a JSON. I'm defining my building as a JSON and a floor as a JSON. And keep in mind that if you're migrating this right from uh, an, an existing um, controller that manages your uh, your network, chances are you're going to be exporting your site information in a one of these formats, Excel, JSON, uh, CSV, or something. So I made it where it's easy for you to kind of plop in your own file so you can use the exact same code to, to do the exact same thing. That's awesome, dude. So uh, if I go here, I'm going in and I'm doing just that. I'm basically using the, the SDK, loading the file for, for area, loading the file for building, loading the file for floor, and Every time you see console.print, this is where I'm leveraging essentially uh, Rich to be able to have a cool display in my terminal. And then I'm going in step by step and I'm saying, go ahead and create the site for me. I have a function that says create. And this is this is where it's beautiful, right? DNA site, create site, pass the payload is the only API and the only thing that you need to do in order to start creating your site. This would be a three-step process if you we were doing it manually using request. So with the SDK, it's just that. And I'm just doing some basically capturing any, handling any error or error handling here on a, and throwing an exception. Okay, that's cool. So, and you didn't have to worry about managing the task IDs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's fantastic. And I just waited for, for, the, for the, the sites to be created and I just moved on. So now that we've created our sites, the next logical step is to go out and do the auto discovery, right? And this is where I'm kicking off the auto discovery. And I'm I'm kicking off the discovery type based on range because I know my IP range and I'm supplying that IP range. Right. And then again, I'm this is DNAC network discovery dot start discovery is the SDK itself. I'm instantiating the SDK. I'm going into the network discovery. And what's cool about this is if you look at the DNA center. SDK, how it was built, and you go to the API documentation, it actually makes sense because network discovery is a category within the API documentation for DNA Center. And in order to execute that API endpoint, it's called start discovery. So oh, very it's cool. okay. logically related. So it makes sense in that. And so we're, uh, we're just initiating a discovery here. And um, I'm basically giving it the name followed by some random number, so I don't because the discovery would fail if if it's if it already exists. So I don't have to worry about uh, deleting. I it gotcha. Okay. Right. So we're doing that, and we're kicking it off. And this takes about a good two to three minutes. It could take longer depending on how how many devices you are managing. Uh, you're bring you're you're trying to discover on your network. Uh, in this case. I'm only discovering four devices, three devices, so it takes about two to three minutes to do so. Well, let's see the and again, let's see the result, man. Yeah, um, and again, I'm just basically this is the only thing that, and I really like this. This is basically where you get that kind of uh, the, the that bar that says, okay, I'm waiting for the discovery. I'm waiting for the discovery using Rich, and just like that, we've initiated the discovery, and I can show you exactly what it looks like. So I've discovered my devices and here's my host, my Mac address. And it was, you know, it was a little bit, uh, the display is a little bit messed up because, because we were zoomed in for our audience to see the, the terminal itself. But basically it's printing out the, the, the different information from that device and it added that to my, my site that I've created. So I've essentially done that and then. Well, Kareem, uh, this was fantastic. And uh, for all you snackers out there that want to grab this code and, and read more about it and try it out, um, you can catch this at blogs.cisco.com slash developer. Uh, just look for, for Kareem's blog series. Um, he'll go through a whole bunch of different uh, Cisco DNA Center material for you. Um, so check that out. Uh, thank you for your time today. And check, check us out in our next episode.